Hello there. I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. And with me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. At whose behest, tonight we have seen Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm not sure why you wouldn't have gone to see it. It's like Spider-Man. That's a long and involved story. Yes, so tonight, Spider-Man Homecoming. And despite the long and involved story that in that is the spider embargo. Is this another one more day thing? Because you know they got rid of Joe Casada and they have Axel Alonso now. It is mostly to do with one more day, the spider embargo. And of course the fact that because of that story, Spider Man did a deal with the actual devil. The actual literal devil, at least in the Marvel universe. Yeah, they don't actually have an actual literal devil. They just have a demonic figure who masquerades as the devil, called Mephisto. Mephisto, the Lord of Hell. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Spider-Man Homecoming. And, yeah, I wouldn't say that it was a new champion on the ladder, because right now I don't think anything could match the spectacle and insanity of Wonder Woman. But it was a very big ride. It was a magnificent ride in the mighty Marvel tradition. Yeah, in its own way. It was kind of low-key, I suppose. Low-key? Well, compared to, you know, how you got Iron Man and his first film and how he ended up going to Iraq and blowing stuff up. Yeah, well, his big final fight was with the would-be CEO of his company. There was a big final fight between Iron Man and the Iron Monger. Check out my Iron Man review on YouTube and Bidme for more details. But in this one, we had massive action, healthy doses of comedy, and a whole ferry split in two. And Spider-Man trying to hold it together. Almost worked, but not quite. Yeah, I suppose key scenes like that were quite good. The, um... The comedy was more irreverent, I think, than uh, side splitting was hilarious. But the action was quite good. I think they tried to aim it lower because, um, they, I mean, like they dropped the friendly neighbourhood Spider Man line in there a few times. I think that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to do something not quite as high level as the other heroes, but kind of maybe above the Netflix level kind of heroes. Well, that's always been Spider-Man's kind of beat. He's been the most uh, high stakes of the supposed street-level heroes. And I hesitate to use this phrase, but I think it contained just the right amount of teenage awkward. Because teenagers are awkward. Yeah, I think he did it better than um, both Andrew Garfield. And Tobey Maguire. Being as they weren't actual teenagers. Yeah, I mean, Andrew Garfield I never really believed. Because it was just too kind of, I don't know, it just seemed too slick to be pulling off the kind of awkwardness of Peter Parker. And uh, Tobey Maguire, while good, then probably went a bit too far. What, too nerdy? Yeah. Well, folks, you can judge for yourself in my Spider-Man 1 review. Also on Vidme and YouTube. I gotta stop dropping these plugs. Yeah, maybe. And of course, a thread running through this was that Iron Man had given him the suit in the first place, so he was running around with a mad genius's technology. I liked his AI in the suit. Karen. Karen the AI. Yeah. I kind of feel sorry for Karen, because now she's been disabled again. Maybe she'll be back. Yeah, maybe, in the sequel. I mean, you don't know, but she's been completely disabled. Yeah, and it's nice having somebody to talk to. It was interesting to see Gwyneth Paltrow back, I suppose, as well. See that they got back together, possibly. They looked like they'd got back together. Well, maybe she couldn't turn down the payday. Maybe. Even for, like, two minutes of screen time. And she barely did anything. 
but that's probably the most we're going to see of Pepper for the foreseeable future. Which is a shame, because it has been her most likeable role. Not that I've seen her in anything else. On that note, I kind of have problems with the characterizations in that Spider-Man film. I mean, I didn't like Flash. I had John Flash. He was just annoying rather than a bully. I think they should have gone more for the, the stereotypical bully sort of character. Because he was just annoying, Flash was. Well, this is the 21st century and I don't think bullying is what it used to be. Especially in an age of cyberbullying. Who knows? And I mean, he was kind of just another nerd anyway, because he was in the like, nerd decathlon thing that they went to. Yes, well... I mean, I suppose the girlfriend character was okay, because she was like a, a made-up new character. And I did like the, um, the strange, freakish woman that they got in there with them as well, Michelle. Well, I didn't like the fact that they went, oh, my friends call me MJ, because if that's supposed to be the MJ character, that's cast completely wrong as well, and characterised completely wrong. Yes, well, the tendrils of one more day, I'm afraid, but I'd expect that it'd be a good 20 or 30 years if they kept making Spider-Man movies, four or five of them, before they even considered getting married. I don't know much about, like... So much about the early years, but in girlfriend terms, he was supposed to have Betty Brand, Gwen Stacy, then MJ. Oh, and Black Cat as well, kind of somewhere in there. And also possibly Silver Sable, they're saying, because there's supposed to be some rumour that Sony want to make a Black Cat and Silver, Silver Sable film, which... No one's ever heard of them, really, so why would anyone want to go and watch a film about them? I'm expecting another Catwoman debacle. And I don't think you'll be dragging me along to see that one. No. Well, the sidekick was quite funny, I suppose. Ned. Yeah. Wasn't there a Ned Leeds in the comics? Don't know. But he did. I don't know much about Miles Morales, but I'm sure from what I've seen of an issue of Miles Morales. He has a kind of chubby Asian sidekick as well or something. So I wonder if they've drawn some of that in from that side of things. Yeah, well, people will want to see the original Peter Parker. And of course, if they want to recast for Miles Morales, when Tom Holland does get a little old for being in high school, then again, by the time he gets out of high school, well, I guess it does answer the question about, that everyone was asking. Where was Spider-Man during the attack on New York by the Choi Tori, as shown in the Avengers film? Because he would have been about seven. And probably not yet bitten by a radioactive spider. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't really make much reference to. It was just like, yeah, he's Spider-Man. You know his backstory. Away he goes. Smart move. Yeah, in some ways. If only more movies had the courage to do that kind of thing. Well, I suppose with some characters that a lot of people haven't heard of so much, they do need to cover the background of, like Doctor Strange and so on, because people don't know them so much. Whereas with your Superman, you can sum it up in four panels. Doomed Planet, Desperate Parents, Last Hope, Kindly Couple. I suppose you can do the same kind of thing with Batman, but yeah, I'd need to get back to you on that one. That seems strange to me nowadays, that they couldn't have saved more people from Krypton, because first they saved Superman, and then they saved Superman's cousin to look after Superman, but she didn't arrive until later on. And it's like, well, why couldn't they have just sent more ships? But that's beside the point. Yeah. I did have a head cannon where Krypton didn't explode, and all of the family L landed on Earth as, like, a research probe instead. To recap on this film, special effects were pretty good. When have there been bad special effects in one of these Marvel movies? Probably not. I'm just comparing it to, you know, earlier Spider-Man films that some people didn't like the special effects in some of the earlier ones. Oh, yeah, well... 
2000 Spider-Man 1. Being now that that was 17 years ago. Can you believe it? Yeah. Well. So anyway, they were good. Yeah. Music was okay. I especially liked the uh, orchestral big band Spider-Man remix thing at the beginning. The Spider-Man orchestration over the Marvel Studios logo. I was literally screaming at the screen. Because really? But hey! Everyone loves the Spider-Man theme. Yes. And you were shocked by the... Uh, the reveal. The reveal near the end. As a... Who the Vulture really was. Mm-hmm. And we ain't spoiling it here. You want to find that out for yourself? Go see the movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Good characters. A fantastic story. A lot of action. A lot of comedy. Good bit of teenage awkward. And just very much... Sexy art may still freak me out. Notice I try to stick glasses on her all the time to make her less sexy, but it just isn't working. Well, come on, man. 50 is the new 40 is the new 30. Yeah, why not? But still. Ha! Creepy! Hell, I've seen women keeping their lips into their 70s these days. Yeah, but Iron Man shouldn't be hitting on Aunt May. It's just not appropriate. Yeah, well, they'll do something about that. At least the good thing with this actual live-action canon, they have to move it on, because eventually... The actors are going to die. Or grow old. Yeah. Well, maybe um, superhero films will hit a point like westerns and everyone will go, like, enough is enough. Now, the difference is, with westerns, you reach a point where that kind of thing just fades away into history. You may as well just make a historical period drama in old England with bodices and busty women. And they still make those occasionally. Yeah, well, that's the BBC for you. But anyway, let's get back to the movie and let's put it on the ladder. Well, I think I'll give it like a 8 out of 10. Because it was pretty good, even though I didn't like some of the characterisation. Okay, so, where's it go? Out of Wonder Woman, Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, Homecoming and Logan. I think it will now go Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Guardians, and then Logan. Yeah, that's pretty much my feeling too. I would also say Wonder Woman, that Wonder Woman goes first, then Spider-Man Homecoming, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and then Logan at the bottom. And just to be clear here, we're not telling you not to go and see Logan. It's a good enough film in its own right. It's very good, it's powerfully acted, um, and it has a good story. It's just, with a depressing tone, it's not something I'd go back to over and over. It's not really for the popcorn audience. It's really not for the popcorn audience. No, maybe not. So, this has been Funky Monkey and his name is Producer. All of the links will be below the video, because now we're moving to YouTube. And, uh... YouTube with me and Minds.com, which I swear at some point I'll upload some more videos to. Well, at least we have a presence there. Anyway, that's the end of our little podcast, so thank you for listening, good night, and we'll see you at the movies. See ya. And a little word on patience. Sometimes it can be worth waiting for things. Other times, not so much. Not so much. Oh, and one more little tip. Never try and record a podcast by the side of a busy road. Good night.